visionary who has inspired and paved the way for generations of women. She inspired individuals to think that they could fly. So enthusiastic. She made it possible in the end for people, to, women to be pilots. She was much more than just a pilot. Everyone has oceans to fly if they have the heart to do it. Is it reckless? Maybe. But what do dreams know about boundaries? On June 1st, 1937, a woman set out on the courageous flight of circumnavigating the globe. After a treacherous 22,000 miles, she vanished and was never to be seen again. Normally, the loss of a single life would not have been noteworthy, but this was not the case when it came to the disappearance of Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart's exploration across the Atlantic supported and enforced the advancement in breaking gender barriers, and she instilled hope in women that allowed them to believe that they could achieve anything they wanted to. Earhart encountered many complications, ranging from sexism to technical problems with flying. Her bravery as a female explorer fostered an exchange of thoughts across the country that helped change people's ideas about women's rights. Amelia Earhart, born July 24, 1897 in Atchison, Kansas, started a revolutionary movement that is still discussed 80 years after her disappearance. Amelia Earhart had a rough and unstable upbringing. Her father, Edwin Earhart, suffered from severe alcoholism, which then caused her mother, Amy Otis Earhart, to move Amelia and her younger sister Muriel out to Chicago in order to get away from their father and have a happier life. Growing up and having to change schools multiple times, Earhart's hunger for becoming an independent woman grew stronger as graduation approached. After graduating, she volunteered as a nurse's aide for the Red Cross and alleviated the struggles of injured soldiers returning from World War I. She came to know many of the wounded pilots and began to develop an admiration for aviation. She then proceeded to continue working in the medical field by doing a pre-med program at the University of Columbia. After a year of attending the University of Columbia, she headed back to Los Angeles where her parents had reunited. When she returned home, her father took her to the Long Beach Air Show and paid for her to go on a 10-minute joyride in a plane. After that flight, she realized that she was positive she wanted to start flying planes. Her passion for exploration within aviation took off. Earhart started to receive flying lessons by pioneer aviator Anita Snuff. After observing Earhart's instinctive command of the aircraft, Anita agreed to immediately begin teaching her and to be compensated later. Because she wanted to engage in aeronautics as much as she could, Earhart started to read several books about becoming a pilot. Quickly, Earhart realized that becoming a female pilot was going to be a difficult task. She encountered many problems. One of the largest and most destructive was the concept of sexism. Although she had complete and full support from her family, the rest of society did not feel the same way. Aviation and aeronautics was a career that was dominated by men, and to see a female pilot was an oddity. Earhart displayed herself as a wild card in society by supporting the thought that women can be part of aviation, along with any other career they wish to pursue. Women, like men, should try to do the impossible. With this concept in mind, Earhart started to attempt to become a pilot, deciding first that she had to look the part to be the part. Chopping off her long locks of hair and trading in her dresses for jodhpurs and a worn leather jacket, she gave up her feminine look to show the male pilots that she was a force to be reckoned with and that her will to become a pilot was just as strong as theirs. Following up her decision that she was fully committed to pursuing a career in flying, Earhart continued her training to become a pilot. On January 3rd of 1921, Earhart used money she had saved from driving trucks to pay Anita Snook for her flying lessons. And six months later, she saved enough money to buy a yellow Kinner Airster biplane that she later named the Canary. On December 15th, 1921, Amelia Earhart passed her flying license test provided by the National Aeronautic Association. After passing her test, Earhart explored the limits of aviation and began to break records and set new standards in the growing world of aviation. In October of 1922, Earhart set a new women's altitude record by flying the Canary 14,000 feet up in the air. The following year, Earhart received her international pilot's license from the Federation Aeronautic International. Earhart was only the 16th female to have an international pilot's license. Having her pilot's license exposed her to many new encounters and places to explore. In 1931, she took an early form helicopter known as an auto gyro, 18,451 feet in the air. Earhart's popularity was spreading infectiously across the nation, and she then became inspired to write her second book titled The Fun of It. Her book was an autobiography that emphasized her ambitions in aviation 
and allowed her to exchange thoughts and advice with people, particularly women, about following their dreams and achieving what they believed in, a concept that both men and women should reflect on and demonstrate. Flying might not be plain sailing, but the fun of it is worth the price. Continuing with her record-breaking flights, Earhart departed from New Finland on May 20, 1932, and landed in Northern Ireland on May 21st, making Earhart the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Three months later, Amelia Earhart became the first woman to fly across the North American continent and back. Because of her astounding achievements as a woman, Earhart visited the White House and created a good friendship with First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt in 1933. Breaking record after record, Earhart took her first long-distance airplane flight in January 1935, when she made a solo flight from Honolulu, Hawaii, to Oakland, California. By taking on this challenge, Earhart became the first person to successfully fly this route without resulting in a disastrous event. The now world-renowned pilot, Amelia Earhart, was ready to explore the world with her longest and largest flight yet, the Round the World flight. Thoughts about this flight started to circulate in 1936, the government then agreed to finance the plane to be used, which was the Lockheed Electra 10E. The flight was then planned to take place in March of 1937, but when Amelia Earhart and her navigator tried to depart from Honolulu, complications with the plane occurred, causing the flight to be canceled and postponed to June of 1937. Then Earhart and her navigator, Fred Noonan, were ready to make a second attempt at circumnavigating the globe. Earhart and her crew made it three-fourths the way around the globe before the journey went amiss. No one is positive where they ended up, but many theories have been proposed. The U.S. government made an official statement about what caused this tragedy, declaring that they ran out of fuel, crashed into the water, and sank. The difficult thing about this whole ordeal is that they were never found. Even with the U.S. Coast Guard launching the largest and most expensive air and sea search in history, and her husband of six years, George Putnam, launching his own search, there was still nothing found. It was as if they vanished into thin air. Earhart's life involved exploring new heights in aviation, encountering and battling sexism, and exchanging the thought of women's rights, all concepts that have left an impact on the United States history. Her exploration of the world and encountering of sexism exchanged the idea to women that they can achieve just as much as men can. She continues to inspire women even 80 years after her disappearance. Now, Amelia Earhart may have been an unlikely heroine for a nation down on its luck, but she embodied the spirit of an America coming of age and increasingly confident, ready to lead in a quite uncertain and dangerous world. She gave people hope and she inspired them to dream bigger and bolder. When she took off on that historic journey, she carried the aspirations of our entire country with her. As Hillary Clinton praised Amelia Earhart for being a prime icon in our history, Eleanor Roosevelt also recognized Amelia Earhart's legendary and iconic feat and the influence that she had on the world. Great minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events. Small minds discuss people. This refers to Amelia Earhart and her work as a women's rights activist and a pilot a topic that should be discussed more frequently and should be applied to women's rights. Amelia Earhart's name has surely engraved hope in women, allowing them to believe that they can pursue anything that they wish to. Amelia Earhart, a skilled explorer, an encounter of sexism, and a leader in the exchange of thoughts of women's rights, will forever be known for her great work and her impact on the United States history.